So this is a paper on the downward pressure on code quality of Copilot. Okay, it's not very long, and there's some projections for 2024. Yeah, we're we're getting in here. Yeah, we're we're looking at some stuff. So code. So apparently, Copilot is not is not getting better. It's getting worse. By the way, just because something is on print paper doesn't mean it probably should have been a blog post, okay? Just because something is on something that looks like printer paper probably could have just been a blog post, okay? Abstract, okay? Abstract is just your first line of your blog post, by the way. 2023 marked the coming out party for GitHub Copilot. In less than two years' time, the AI programming assistant shot from prototype to cornerstone used by millions of developers across hundreds of thousands of businesses. Its unprecedented growth defines a new era in how code gets written. A uh, quick poll here. We're going to do a quick poll because I'm actually curious how many of you guys uh, use Copilot. A lot of yeses. No, I will not. Interesting, interesting. No, I won't pay for it. Like, yeah, you just uh, you just don't want to pay for it. Okay. So we got a lot of people that just don't want to pay for it. We got uh, people that will just, uh, out of principled stance, not use it. A lot of people that don't care about it. And a few that use other coding tools. Okay. All right. Let's keep on going. All right. GitHub has published several pieces of research on the growth and impact of AI on software development. Among their findings is that developers write codes 55% faster. I always found this to be such a crazy take. Like, you know, there's, there's, only, a, there's only one way they can figure out this information. Likely, which is that they have to be gathering data from VS Code. That's the only way I can really think about that to be true. Unless if they're trying to say that they're observing repository changes and changes are happening 55% faster. Those are the only two I can really think of. Let's see. The profusion of LLM generated code begs the question, how does the code quality and maintainability compare to what would have been written by a human? Yes, this is this is this is a good question right here. Is it more similar to be careful, refined contributions of a senior developer, or more akin to the disjointed work of a short-term contractor? Let's put it a little bit different. Let's put a little, maybe we could put a little different spin on this one. Um, is it better to have three junior devs who a senior dev rapidly looks over the code and says it's okay, or to have one mega eager junior dev that can inject code directly into your editor while you're ty whilst you're typing and you have to review it at all points whether you are junior or senior dev good question yeah that's uh, that's how github copilot's always felt to me is just like the world's most eager intern that gives you pretty mediocre to shitty code totally willing to make boilerplate and does it really really fast Junior is greater than uh, – Copilot's greater than Junior? Mm, I just don't think so. Uh, to investigate, a GitClear collected 153 million changed lines of code authored between January 2020 and December 2023. This is the largest known database of highly structured code change that has been used to evaluate code quality differences. Okay, so pre-LLM to post-LLM. We find disconcerting trends for maintainability. Code churn, the percentage of lines that are reverted or updated less than two weeks after being authored, is projected to double in 2024 compared to it in 2021, pre-AI baseline. Okay, okay. We further find that the percentage of added code and copy-pasted code is increasing in proportion to updated and deleted and moved code. In this regard, code generated during 2023 more resembles an uh, itinerant contributor prone to violate the dryness of the repos visited. Yeah, that's actually an interesting point. Um, if, if code is really, you know how there's, you know, like inevitably on a lot of projects, you will find things that have, um, like some utils folder, right? Some helpers folder. Some people are just like, utils, utils are absolutely the worst ever. Can you please look at my helpers folder, right? Right? I just, I, dude, I hate that shit so much. It's just like, yo, 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 dog. Yo, dog, that's the same thing. That's like literally the same thing. Sh shut up. Stop it. Okay. You don't want a, a nice bike shed, dog. Yo, that bike shed. Real cool color of blue. Am I right? Um, am I right? Uh, but with Copilot, if you need to write some helper function really quickly, you could imagine that Copilot 
is so likely to give you the answer quickly that you are less likely to use utils and maybe more frequently repeat yourself. I'm not saying it's good code. I'm just saying with like little, like especially JavaScript, because JavaScript has virtually like JavaScript has one of the worst standards out there. Uh, it uh, it does not have a huge amount of of helpers, right? Like there's no sum function. How many times have you written sum in JavaScript? I have written sum so many times, and if you use something like TypeScript, which puts the type into it, you realize like how quick Copilot can like kind of understand sum and will just create it. Reduce, yeah, I'm sure I would use it. Here, we, here we'll find out right now. Vim uh, test.ts. We'll put a little TS on this one, even though I don't use TypeScript these days. I've been using a lot of JS doc. Some numbers, a number array, uh, number. I mean, it, it does a pretty good job, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's like, it's mostly there, right? It's, 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 I'm not surprised they used reduce, right? You would expect them to kind of use a reduce, right? Out of context, yeah. JS doc and good classes is all you need. I love, I love JS doc. JS doc with TS, um, the TS checker. It's beautiful. All right, table of contents. Uh, we got some, okay, we got a bunch of stuff. Let's, let's look at this stuff. All right, GitHub 55% faster coding, 46% more code written, 1.5 trillion uh, added to GDP. Wait, GitHub said that? They just they just add in GDP like it's going out of style. When did I didn't realize GitHub Copilot added that many trillions in GDP? Shit, son, we can dude. Let's get more debt with with numbers like this. With numbers like these, a little wonder that GitHub's own CEO Thomas uh, Domke has been taking time from his usual CEO duties to write about AI revolution. A blog post and research paper he published on GitHub in 2023 tell a heady story about the rapid proliferation. Pr proliferation of copilot 55 percent faster coding 46 percent more code written 75 percent more fulfilled now this last one is just so interesting like what causes somebody to be fulfilled uh typically for me whenever i'm writing code a fulfillment or maybe satisfaction might be a better word comes from when i complete something do you think that this number that they're measuring because we're gonna remember who uses copilot there's a large percentage of people that use Copilot. Okay, not large, but a certain percentage of people that use Copilot because they get it for free because they have a popular open source repo. There's another percentage of people that use it because they're students and they get it for free. Okay? These are woke stats. Hold on. Just hold on. Just walk with me. Okay? Walk with me. Just walk with me on this one. Um, and so... Imagine you're a student. You're going to struggle completing. You're not, you're not good at building projects. So now you have a magic tool that comes by and boom, you can start writing code even though you don't really understand it. Like I think that people, you know, and then if they survey their, their users, it would look like people are more happy because people who don't know how to code well because they just simply haven't spent the you know the year required to uh to learn how to code effectively or at least to some level effectively instead they're spending three months and they're getting that same fulfillment that maybe we get after a couple years of programming they're now getting within three months and so they're feeling more fulfilled and i bet you that copilot highly over indexes into students which by the way i'm also super worried about students using copilot that's my that's my thesis okay that's that's or that's my hypothesis that's 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 my hypothesis why what this means and i, I do do i think it's dangerous absolutely completely unearned sense of fulfillment i mean is it unearned they still have to build the thing they still have to build it is it wrong or is it right like a nice hair loser hey you shut up uh, you know, like, how I think about it is that in the next five years, our, however we're programming is going to completely change. And so to think that this will not be the only way people start to learn how to program is kind of wild, right? Within five years, nobody is going to learn how to program by, like, reading a book. It's just not going to happen. 
right? You know what? Pretty much everybody's going to learn how to program by starting a Next.js application, installing TypeScript, starting an account on GitHub, starting an account on Vercel, launching a Vercel Hello World application. Like that's going to be everybody's first programming experience. You know, they, they don't even build, they don't even build the asterisk house using a while loop. Okay, which I think is a very important first task. Absolutely. I know. I think it is. Uh, that's too much for a beginner and way too much abstraction. I know. it. I, I mean, uh, this beats Raid Shadow Legends. Absolutely. This beats Raid Shadow Legends. Anyways. All right. Interesting. Okay. Let's keep on going. The same post, uh, Domkey asserts that more than 20,000 organizations are already using GitHub Copilot for business. This follows GitHub's announcement from February 2023 that more than 1 million people were already using Copilot on personal license when Copilot for business was released. GitHub has been making commendable progress on both advancing AI quality and on being transparent about the results of their effort. Okay. 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 Uh, what is the let's see? What is the total percentage of developers using AI to author code? In a separate study that GitHub undertook with Wakerfield Research in June 2023, they assert that 92% of U.S.-based developers working in large companies report using an AI coding tool. Okay, I mean that's pretty flaky because that could be ChatGPT. Like I, I use ChatGPT for all the stupid TypeScript errors that I get. Not I'm not talking about like the 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 types issue. Uh, I'm not talking about those ones. I'm talking about when I'm trying to when I'm trying to edit a build pipeline. That's not some simple one-dimensional build pipeline where you need to, to have a doctorate in CMake to be able to do anything. And all of a sudden, it's just like I don't know. I don't know why these things aren't. I don't know. I don't know why, uh, dude. Dude, once once you're in like Webpack config that's spread around like 25 files. <sighs> Like when your when your webpack config gets so big that it requires its own team to maintain, you just don't even know. You you don't you don't you don't know the hell that exists out there. You don't even know, because y'all think that it's just create Vite app, and that's what is used at large production companies. That's not what's used at large production companies. Okay, that's not how it works. I hate to break this to you, but you live in a bubble of zero user applications. Just use RSC. Just use Snowpack, bro. <laughs> Deprecated. They go on to claim that 70% of developers say that they see significant benefits to using AI. Still, August 2023 res uh, survey by O'Reilly Publishers found that 67% of surveyors, uh, surveyed developers claimed that they uh, weren't yet using chat GPT or Copilot. This suggests that GitHub still has potential for significant market capture. Which makes sense. Uh, I would assume that's 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 true. The problem with AI generated code. All right, let's get into it. This is where the meat's at. Uh, developers won't be adopting Copilot if they don't believe that it accelerates their ability to produce code. Fair. GitHub's research finding uh, to, on this point says developers are 75% more fulfilled when using Copilot. To a first approximation, developers embrace the product. This doesn't reveal whether their near-term satisfaction will be shared by those who go on and maintain their code. That is such... That is one of the most incredible skill issue insults I have ever seen in my entire lifetime. They may feel more fulfilled and satisfied but the people with whom maintain their code are not sharing same sentiment. <laughs> fulfilled, what's their definition? We don't, we don't get a definition for what it means to be fulfilled. Initial impressions from longtime code researcher Adam uh, Tornhill, author of Your Code as a Crime Scene, are skeptical. Nice, a, nice image. Could you use AI to upscale this maybe? The main challenge with AI-assisted programming is that it becomes so easy to generate a lot of code which shouldn't have been written in the first place. Nice job retweeting this and not liking it. Just trying to ratio the man? Are you trying to ratio him? What is this? Uh, yes, I actually agree with this statement completely. This is actually a really great statement right here. Uh, GitHub claims that code is written 55% faster with Copilot. I really... Okay, so... Honestly, I, I'm gonna give you another. I'm gonna give you another heater. Okay, we're gonna we're 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 cooking. Okay, so I'm just gonna tell you how I feel about this statement. When I hear that GitHub. Copilot makes you write 55% faster code. I have to believe that most people don't know how to type. Like, 
GitHub Copilot does make me a bit faster, maybe like 10%. But 55%? Yo, dog, do you just like look at your cursor blink waiting for Copilot results to come in? Like 55 is fast. 55% is fast. Boomer? What's Boomer? You got to go on for that. What? Go on. Explain yourself. All right, Sankos, bring it on. You're on the big board now. Let's go. Let's go. Explain yourself. What is Boomer about that? Does it make one a boomer because one believes you should be good at using tools that you use for 40 hours a week? AI is future. That that's 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 what you're going to go with. AI is future. Like that's it. Like no no I I don't think anyone's disagreeing with you on this point. Um, but learning how to type is a very valuable skill, considering the fact that you couldn't type out your own sentence. Maybe just for a moment, consider learning how to type yourself so that you're not 55% faster. What is this? What is this? Anyways. All right. The problem uh, here is that code spends 10x more time being read than being written, according to Robert Martin, author of Clean Code. I also, I really just don't believe that. Do you really only write code 10% of the time and read code, or write code 9% of the time and read code 90% of the time? I know that's 99%, but close to that. Like, that's not me. I write a lot of code. I probably write, I mean, it depends on the season, right? Uh, like some seasons I'm looking at someone else's stuff and that takes, it's, it's a very slow process. Then it is really like a, 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 a one to 10 ratio. But whenever I'm building any feature, like I'm just doing the building thing and I just, I just write code all day. You're in the 1% of devs. Writing code is 1% of devs? When you write a feature, you're doing, you read for 10x and write for 1x? Really? For Netflix, yeah, for Netflix. People mostly read it? Damn, okay, shit. Uh, I mean, hey, you know, I can take the L on this one. You only read, uh, I, I mean, I, I, I tend to only read code when I'm in the process of learning the environment I'm trying to code in, right? So I'm in a, I'm in a learn phase, and then I'm in a write phase. And that depends on the complexity of the project, too. Some, some, some projects are exceptionally complex, and so the, the reading takes like a month to really get up to speed, and the writing could take like two weeks. And so then I'm at like a 66-33, I'm factoring the, yeah, I, I literally am factoring the, uh, y'all learn by reading. I technically, typically I try to read, get a basic idea, and then I usually try to debug my way through. I find that just simply walking through code and watching it go is, is much easier for me to kind of learn a project faster than it is for me just to look at code. I find looking at code one of the hardest ways to learn, whereas executing code is just like, it's just much much easier for me to learn because then I can actually see the state because there's a lot of there's a lot of state that's in your head that's hard to represent in code that you have to walk through to see it. Don't you mostly write new tools? I do write a lot of new tools, but I also write tools for programs. Like right now I'm in a process of I'm in a, I'm in a reading phase right now. And I'll probably be in a reading phase for a little bit. All right. One, being inundated with suggestions for added code but never suggestions for updating, moving and deleting code. This is, I mean, that's cool. Uh, also super dangerous. I'd be so worried if Copilot's like, go ahead, delete this code. I got gotcha. you. Update it with this code, which is more concise and easier to read. 
And you're just like, uh, is it? What? Why am I deleting code? I don't even know what happens. Uh, this is a user uh, interface limitation of text-based environments where code authoring occurs. Time required to evaluate code suggestions can become costly, especially when a developer works in an environment with multiple competing auto-suggestion mechanisms, including popular JetBrains IDEs. <laughs> what? What? Uh, I do agree with this. Uh, I think evaluating code suggestions is one of the... You know what? Honestly, I feel the least fulfilled when I'm evaluating crappy code suggestions. Just saying. Um, code suggestions uh, is not optimized by the same incentives as code maintainers. This is a very interesting point here. Uh, AI is future. Uh, code suggestion algorithms are incentivized to propose suggestions most likely to be accepted. Code maintainers are incentivized to minimize the amount of code that needs to be read, i.e. understand how to adapt an existing system. Fair. These drawbacks may explain the difference between the greater tendency of a junior developers to accept code suggestions compared to the more experienced counterparts, according to GitHub researchers. Oh, this is, this is so good. This is so good. Remember that fulfilled matrix? The fulfilled percentage we are looking at? You want to guess who's probably voting they're super fulfilled using Copilot? You want to guess who's probably not feeling as fulfilled using Copilot? This is actually a, this is an incredible graph, by the way. I know, I know this, I know this is, but still, like, I mean, how many times do you get Copilot suggestions per day? A hundred, a thousand, five hundred, and so five percent starts to make a big difference. Take that over, take that over, uh, take that over a month, right? Like a month is a lot. A month, there's a, I, I get a lot of suggestions over the month. Level 100 boss versus fi, uh, level 5 intern, yeah. How do they define experienced? Um, they probably just use, honestly, the duration of the GitHub uh, profile, is my guess, is that co what they do is they probably take the duration that you've had an account for, how many commits and various things you've worked with on GitHub, and then translate that to experience. So it's not true experience, it's just partial experience. You know what I mean? Uh, Copilot, replacing imposter syndrome. Uh, experienced developers have most informed understanding of how costly code will be to maintain over time. If they are more averse to using AI suggestions, it raises questions about extra code that junior developers now contributing faster than ever. I, lo I, I, I absolutely love this. I think this is a really great thought right there. All right. Code definitions. We're going to do a quick, or I'm just going to kind of, we're just going to do a quick perusing adding code, newly committed lines that are distinct. Uh, excluding lines that are incrementally changed. Okay, those are updates. Deleted code lines that are removed. Moved code lines of code that are cut and pasted to a new file. Updated code uh, committed line. Let's see. A committed line of code based off an existing line of code that modifies. Okay. Find and replace code. A pattern of code changed where the same string is removed from plus three locations and substituted with a consistent replacement content. Okay. Copy paste of code. Identical line uh, contents, including programming language keywords. Uh, that are committed to multiple files or functions within a co uh, commit. Oh, interesting. No op code. Trivial code changes, such as changes to white space or changes to the line numbers within the same code block. No op code is excluded from research. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. Along with evolution of code changes, we uh, explore the change in churned code. This is not treated as code operations because a churned line can be paired with many operations, including added, deleted, or updated code. For a line to be qualified as churned, it must have been authored, pushed to the Git repo, then reverted or substantially revised within the subsequent two weeks. Interesting. Okay, so this is actually, this is a great definition, by the way. I actually really like this definition. Churn is best understood as changes that were either incomplete or erroneous when the author initially wrote, committed, and pushed them to the company's Git repo. Um, I don't think that uh, natural language is going to ever be a very great place for uh, programming. Natural language is too loosey-goosey. I just don't believe this statement just in general. Uh, I don't think, I, I, I think uh, coding is going to change slowly and some other thing is going to kind of come out of all of this that is going to be something that's not, I, I, I do think that there's going to be a higher level language than we've ever seen before that will exist, but it's not going to be English. I think that that is going to happen. JS++ will happen. 
All right, anyways, trends and commits, uh, line operations. To understand how Copilot has changed code quality, we analyze the number of different line operations that GitClear has observed, segmented by the year which code was authored. Okay. Uh, the raw numbers for this analysis include uh, in the appendix. Here's the percentage by year. Okay. Added. So added has gone up. Look at that. Look at that going up. Upness. Now that could be because between the, the years of 2020 to 2024, there's also a huge, huge influx. Because remember, COVID happened at this time, and COVID effectively made an entire slew of people reevaluate their life and want to get into programming. So are added lines more likely? Are people putting more, um, are people just putting up more projects potentially, right? Deleted lines also going up as far as percentages go. Updated, it's fairly stable. That's a fairly stable amount. Moved, gone way down. That's interesting. Moved code. Do you think with the speed of these tools, we just rewrite more often? This is, it's very interesting, right? This is a very interesting trend because it's already started to kind of go down. Like, right, 2022, I don't think LLM stuff was really that popular. Maybe like late, what, in November 2022 was Copilot announced? Uh, Copy-pasted code. I, I, th I think this is a, a greater sign that there's more junior people around. Maybe. I guess you could argue that it is Copilot. Copilot is allowing you to create more of the same boilerplate code faster. Therefore, you just don't use a utils. Find and replace doesn't look like it's changed. Churn is this. I, I think this is probably one of the most interesting uh, ones right here is churn. Because that is a pretty large leap. These two years, it wasn't like even these three years, it wasn't high. And then this has gone up like because that's like a doubling in churn. Meaning that lines created are lines changed within two weeks. How, let's see. Uh, here are how these uh, look in graph form, where the left axis illustrates the pre prevalence of code change operations, so which is a percentage sum to one. The right axis uh, and light blue line track the corresponding changes to churn code. All right, so added is kind of going upwards. Deleted is going upwards. Copy-pasted is going upwards. Moved is going downwards. So moved is the one that's really getting hurt here. And churn is going upwards. If I am learning, I uh, I am churned that into a fine butter. Wait, what? What? I'm churning. I'm churning so hard. You don't move but delete stuff? I don't know. Well, that's what it looks like is that moving is going down and deleting is going up. Anyways, the projections for 2024 utilize OpenAI's uh, GPT-411-06 preview assistant to run quadratic regressions on existing data. The full method used to interrogate the OpenAI assistant is provided in the appendix. Okay. Uh, given the exponential growth of Copilot reported by GitHub, the AI assistants in general, it seems likely that 2024 numbers will continue to the trend that began to take form in 2022 and accelerated in 2023. All right. So they're saying that move is going to go down even further. Added, deleted, and up, and ooh, churn's gonna go way up. They're, they're, I mean, they're, they're thinking that churn's gonna go what up to seven and a half percent. Wait, no, thirty. That's dude. I'm way off on that one. I'm way off on that one. Their thirty nine percent increase would be what? That'd be practically dang near ten percent or what? Nine percent? Nine and a half percent? Nine and a half percent? Yeah, because. T uh, Nine would be twenty-eight percent. That's like nine and a half percent. Damn, that's a. This is going way up. This is going way up. This is going way down. The move is really curious. I wonder why moved is going so far down. I can't really understand why that one's going down. I guess refactoring is just not a thing anymore. Obliterate and create new. Uh, interpreting code operation changes. The most significant changes observed in 2023 are to churn, moved, and copy-pasted code. The implications for each change are reviewed in this section. Okay, good. The burgeoning churn. Recall that churn is the percentage of code that was pushed to the repo, then subsequently reverted, removed, or updated within two weeks. This was re a relatively infrequent outcome when developers authored all their own code. Only 3-4% to 4 of code was churned prior to 2023, although there is a hint of the coming uptick in 2022 when the churn jumped 9%. 2022 was the first 
first year copilot was available in beta and that happened later in the year too and the year uh that chat gpt became available 2022 to 2023 the rise of ai assistants are strongly correlated with mistake code being pushed to the repo if we assume that copilot prevalence was zero percent in 2021 five to ten in 2022 and 30 percent in 2023 the corresponding citations uh let's see the pearson correlation coefficient between these variables is 0 0.98 yo i'm happy for you or or i'm sorry but I ain't reading all that. Uh, the, churn, uh, the churn becomes more commonplace. The greater risk of mistake being deployed to production. The current pattern continues in 2024. More than 7% of all code changes will be reverted within two weeks. That's, you know, I guess I never really thought about churn in that way. But 7% of all code changes will be reverted within two weeks. It's pretty, it's pretty wild. Yeah, and then it'll be one in 10 lines. One in 10 lines will be reverted soon uh based on this data we expect to see an increase in google's dora cha uh, change failure rate uh when 2024 state of devops report is released later this uh in the year contingent on the research using uh data from ai assisted developers in 2023 interesting so they're actually even calling in the future dora 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 the explorer changes uh the failure rate going up Interesting. Less moved code implies less refactoring, less reuse. Moved code is typically observed when refactoring an existing code system. Refactoring systems in general, moved code in particular, underpin code reuse. As a product grows in scope, developers traditionally rearrange existing code into new modules and files that can be reused uh, by new features. The benefit of code reuse are fam uh, familiar to experienced developers. Compared to newly added code, reuse code has already been tested and proven stable in production. Yeah, it's, it's less risky. Often, re reused code uh, has been touched by multiple developers and is more likely to include documentation that that okay that second line right here i don't believe that at all uh this accelerates the interpretation of the module by developers who are new to it combined with the growth i'd say that the benefit you get with code reuse is that there's multiple authors that are familiar with the code and questions can be disseminated among many people and experience can be disseminated uh, among more people as opposed to the other way around It could be that more people are willing to rewrite what was written by the bot instead of uh, by them or AI rewriting faster. Say, uh, not saying the bot doesn't write awful code sometimes, but it might have the impact. Okay, fair. Fair. This is a hairy situation. Shut up about my hair. Okay, I lost a bet, and I want you guys to understand that. This accelerates the interpretation of the module by developers who are new to it. Combined with the growth in code labeled copy pasta, there is little room to doubt that the current implementation of AI assistance discourage code reuse. Instead, refactoring and working uh, to dry code, uh, these assistants offer one keystroke temptation to repeat existing code. One problem, but I mean, the inverse I do have with this one, which may be a part of the, this so-called AI revolution that we, I think is really valuable to think about, is that dry often leads to people abstracting code early, right? The pursuit of dry is just like this weird earworm of I must make all my code reuse. And there's some functions that are really close and they could almost be the same thing, but then you create this like really abstracted function that has, you know, that's just not good. That's more brittle than just the two individual functions that are super close. And perhaps it is fine that there is more quote unquote copy pasted code if it's close enough in structure. Like, I'm not necessarily opposed to it. Uh, abstract as early as possible. That is the craziest statement I've ever read. Um, people are asking for the, the link. Yeah, here, here, here's the link. Abstraction. Uh, dude, stop abstracting. Start writing. Stop abstracting. Yeah, Dry has done more damage to software than I think a lot of things have. More copy-pasted code implies future headaches. There is a, there is perhaps no greater scourge to long-term code maintainability than copy-pasted code to Twitter. Is terrible. Boom. Putting that out there. All right. I didn't really even think about it. All right, to an extent, when a non-keyword line of code is repeated, the author is admitting, I didn't have the time to evaluate the previous implementation. By re-adding code versus reusing it, the chore is left to the future maintainers to figure out how... Uh, oh, typo, unfortunately. Is there a typo? 
Oh, no. It is terrible. Boom. Got it. All right. We got it. We got it. Sorry. I didn't even look at it. The chore is left to the future maintainers to figure out how to cons uh, consolidate parallel code paths that implement uh, re repeatedly needed function uh, functionality. Yeah. I mean, it's still hard. It's not easy. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure if it's bad or good. Since most developers d derive greater satisfaction from implementing new features than they do interpreting potential reusable code. Fair. That's. I mean, that's fair. I'd, I'd say that this is one of the most fair statements I've ever read in my lifetime. It is much nicer to create new than it is to to like try to like reuse code. F very fair. Hey, thanks for all the the subs. Uh, copy pasta code often persists a long past its expiration date, especially on less experienced teams. There may be no code maintainer with the moral authority to remove dupli uh, duplicative code. Even when there are senior engineers possessing such authority, the willpower cost of understanding the code w well enough to delete is hard to overstate. If there isn't a CTO or VP of engineering who actively schedules time to reduce tech debt, you can't add uh, executive-driven time pressures to the list of reasons why newly added slash copy-pasted uh, code will never be consolidated into the component libraries that underpin long-term development velocity. You know, something I guess I never really thought about here, in all of this that we're talking about right now, have we ever thought about the fact that 2020, 2021 – had one of the greatest influxes ever into the internet with people, right? A huge amount of people all flooded onto the internet. Uh, Amazon's greatest quarters were during this time, right? It was wild. Uh, everything just piled in. And then zero interest phenomenon, zero interest rate phenomenon got lifted in all aspects of society. Uh, not only are we paying less in interest, people are just less using the internet and people are struggling. A lot of these companies are struggling to turn a profit now. And so maybe this desire for new features and push from above could also potentially be causing some of these, these this type of movement in code. So you got kind of like the ultimate influx of crazy, which is you have pressure from above that hasn't been happen that hasn't happened in this kind of situation for a long time. You have an unusual influx of new talent that just hasn't happened again. It just hasn't happened. This amount of new talent flooding into the market and you have AI. So it's like, there's a lot of confounding factors here that I think is really hard to just say the reason why these things are happening is because of Copilot. Though I don't, I don't disagree with it. And you've got a second problem that's going to happen. AI, these LLMs are really great at training off of human ingenuity. They are not great on training off what they produce. And so in what amount of of time will we see some potential oopsie daisies kind of coming from this where where code quality is going down like at a faster rate i don't know could be interesting i think we're right on the precipice of a chat bot that blue hair yes they did i i think i think we're right on the precipice of like the jippity getting high on its own supply move you know what i mean it is just as Boeing, I don't, I don't get the, I don't get the reference, unfortunately. Since uh, Git clear operations only include code that is duplicated within a single commit, it is likely that 11% copy pasted uh, measured in 2023 is only a fraction of the total paste pasting being quietly uh, seeded into repos. Oh, absolutely, a lot of people still practice pretty atomic commits or regular updating. So yeah. All right, trends in revised uh, in revised code age. Uh, second, independent means to access how code quality has changed in 2023 versus before is to analyze the data from Git uh, Clear's code provenance derivation. Yeah, uh, a code pro uh, provenance. Assessment evaluates the length of time that passes between when code is authored and when it's subsequently updated or deleted. Okay, okay. Okay, interesting, interesting. Th I mean, this is a very cool graph. This is a very cool graph right here. Less than two-week churn rate has gone up. 
less than one month appears to be flat. Less than one year has gone down. Less than one to two years has gone down. Code is just not used as long. You can see it right here. This is pretty much flat. This is going up. These are going down. That's, I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a super cool observation. Interpreting uh, code age trends. Code provenance data uh, corroborates the pattern observed in the code operation analysis. The age of, co of the code when it is replaced has shifted much younger from 2022 to 2023. Specifically, code replaced in less than two weeks has jumped 10%. Meanwhile, code older than one month has changed 24% less frequently in 2023 versus 2022. All right, I'm going to throw out one more thing. There's also a huge amount of open source projects and everything pushed for bleeding edge type of um, uh, uh, projects to showcase people's talent again with the large influx and I just think of the last two years of Vercel they've made a lot of big changes to their application and a lot of people have rewritten and rechanged their code and so does it make sense that long lived code is becoming more difficult in the age of ever prog uh, progress on web technologies I think that that damn there could be four confounding factors here people uh I don't know. It's just interesting that that technology is also moving the fastest it has ever moved. Like, ever. Iteration speed and time to market feel absolutely key to surviving, yeah. Uh, the trend implies that prior to AI assistance, developers may have been more likely to find a recently authored code in their repo to target for refinement and reuse. Around 70% of products built in the early 2020s used the Agile methodology per a tech report survey. Uh, Pour one out for them. Pour one out. In Agile, features are typically planned and executed per sprint. Typical sprint lasts two to three weeks. It aligns with the data surmised that the team circa 2020 were more likely to convene uh, post-sprint to discuss what recently implemented and how to reuse it. Ah, oh, in a proximal sprint. Ah, oh, dude, I love, dude, nothing better than just meeting with my meetings about my meetings about my code changes. Uh, questions for uh, follow-up research. Yeah. Can incentives be created to contradict the add and forget tab-based invocation that pervades code suggestions engines of 2024? So I'm, Again, I'm not actually 100% convinced just based on the things we've kind of talked about and just some of my uh, put, uh, unfounded, okay, they're not they're not guaranteed projections here, but a, I don't know if it's purely a co-pilot problem because tonight will be the night that I will fall for you over again. Thank you for whatever that meant. Uh, while AI could be trained to identify code consolidation opportunities, it would be uh, would it be invoked? Dude, it'd be so dangerous. I could totally understand the fear of that. Can we all agree that that would be terrifying? Like that would be terrifying if Copilot's like just delete these five functions and put this new function here. You might be like, what? What? I don't know if I trust this, right? Uh, and then people are really shitty at uh, unit testing. Real talk, people are very bad at unit testing. And so they often unit test, like, things too much. And so then any of these deletions would also cause many unit tests to have to be rethought of. I think that, I think there'd be a lot of interestingness to it all. Copilot refactoring, I know. Brave. It's brave. Tw that's 2024 brave is letting copilot refactor. That is such a tweet. That is a tweet right there. 2024 Brave is letting a co-pilot refactor your code. Boom. feel like that's pretty good. Another salient question in light of this data, at what rate does development progress become inhibited by additional code, especially when it becomes copy and pi pasted code? I find that as a project goes on, the time to feature goes down, right? Uh, I think that's extremely natural unless if you're extremely... Uh, militant about how code is added in the first place. I think Linux has been one of the most successful code uh, repos of all time ever. I have never seen a repo last as long as it does while continuing to add new features. Yes, I understand my hair is a little is 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 it contains some green in the blue. Okay. Uh, Especially when it comes to copy-pasted code, there is almost certainly an inverse correlation between the number of lines in a repo and the velocity in which developers can modify those lines. Yeah, I mean, I think that's that, that natural. Uh, the current uncertainty is when the accumulated copy-pasted debt uh, 
uh, too great to ignore. Knowing the rate w- at which slowdown takes hold would allow f- future tools to highlight when a manager should consider cutting back time on new features. I just don't know if you could... I just... I don't know. That is such a... I don't know if AI can make these kind of calls. I don't know. I think it should just be obvious... I think what really should be obvious is when you bring on a new person and you have a new person look at the code that is written, and if the WTFs per uh, per hour exceeds a certain level, then I think that is probably time for you to cut things back. If it could, would anyone believe it? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Uh, Final question worthy of exploration. What is the total percentage of copy-pasted code that is now occurring compared to 2020 to 2022? Since GitClear currently measures the copy-pasted code within the context of an individual commit, it seems likely that the total copy-paste volume, all non-keyword, non-comment lines of code uh, repeated within a file, uh, might be doubled what uh, GitClear currently measures. You know, it would be really like an interesting project would be to validate this idea Use something like Tree Sitter, which can valid, which can like look at the shape of the code you're using, and not just like the names, right? It's not confounded by the names and all that. You can actually just look at the tree and try to find identical trees within a code. How often are there identical trees within a code, and how big are the average identical trees found? I think that could be a really cool research. It'd be a lot of fun. That's a billion dollar startup right there. I don't think it is because it's 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 it, it doesn't really give you much. The classic tree measuring, yeah, classic tree measuring. TJ, uh, you know, all codes a tree when you really think about it. Um, I always thought that would be a really cool um, potential Git minify attempt. You know how there's like these minifications. It would have a it would certainly have a a, a runtime issue, but to be able to take your minified code, look for duplicate tree structures and refactor out duplicate tree structures into even further minified code. I think it'd be a really fun project. It's something I like I des I, I want to do so well. It's dry but on the machine level. But it also has a huge implication on performance, right? If you just start if you just start refactoring like that, you could cause significant more uh it's like a compression. It's like a compression, but it's it's on the it's on JavaScript, right? So it'd be on Java. It wouldn't work for compile. You wouldn't do this on compiled, obviously. It's like a compiler. Yeah, it's like a compiler. I don't know. It, it's it's just a really interesting project I've always wanted to explore. I've been thinking about it for like way too long. Anyways, super cool. Uh, Super cool paper, honestly. Conclusion, devs uh, wary for a reason. Uh, by both data points, uh, we evaluated negative pressures on code quality were present in 2023. This correlates to a pro- proliferation of LLMs in general and AI code assistance in particular. Developer assessments like uh, Git, uh, GitHub's 2023 survey with Wakefield Research hints that developers already received the de- decrease or perceive the decrease in code quality. I definitely can see it in uh, ChatGPT. Getting ChatGPT to produce code is so hard these days. You like have to... You have to emotionally abuse it to get it to get code. You start off all super nice asking for it and just like skips swaths of code. And you're like, yo, yeah, but how is that uh, How is that implemented? Hey, how about you actually do the implementation, bro? Uh, their top response was collaboration and communication followed by code quality in second place. When the question uh, switched to what metrics should be evaluated when actively using an AI, their response shifted with code quality. Now the top concerns and number of production instances rising to number three. Interesting. Production instances, uh, production incidents are less important than time to complete task. To me, this just might be right here. This might be the thing we're looking at. Uh, when individual developers lack the data to substantiate why code quality and production incidents uh, become more, more pressing concerns with AI, our data suggests a possible backstory. When developers are inundated with quick and easy suggestions that will work in the short term, it becomes a constant temptation to add more lines of code without really checking whether an existing system could be refined for reuse. The uh, To the extent that inexperienced developers continue to offer implicit copy-paste suggestions via the key, uh, tab key, uh, to f- the fix for the situation won't be easy. It is beholden on the engineer leader to monitor incoming data and consider its implications for future product maintenance. 
Developer analytics tools, including GitClear, can help detect the rate in which problematic code is being seeded. Specific questions to evaluate. Is the percentage of uh, code reuse falling? Are there changes to how much code is being moved and copied and pasted? Is it easy for developers to discover and reuse, uh, discover code reuse opportunities? Uh, this last one's really hard because I really think this only works in smaller code bases. Like if you've ever been in a multi-million line code base, it's extremely hard. It, there, there, there just comes a point where it becomes really difficult to reuse code. Very interesting though. Great article. Great articles. I think that whatever the problem is, is more than just Copilot. And I think the downward pressure on code quality is going to continue to grow significant over the next couple years. And that is, I think, because of the significant increase in speed of moving or the, the, the speed at which technology is changing. So the technical depth is just shrinking on a lot of people. Like a lot of people are no longer as technically savvy as they once were. When you used something like jQuery, you were pretty technically savvy because you were pre predominantly just using DOM nodes with some jQuery to be able to like kind of take care of all the sucky of listening and all that kind of stuff. And so like your ability to be pretty deep was pretty quick and you could actually keep on becoming deeper and more experienced in it. Whereas with like, just say React, React in general, your ability to become an expert in React doesn't really exist because it's just how much you want to be able to build and which way you want to be, be able to build. And there's like 19 different ways you can build something with it. And I just don't know if it, it, it really exists other than your familiarity with React, but then React changes every two years, which makes it again, really hard to develop a deep expertise. Unless if you've had this deep expertise growing for so many years and you're able to kind of follow it and move it with it all. I loved jQuery until I hated it. Plain JS is great. I love J jQuery is great. jQuery is terrible. jQuery is such a success story. Dude, it's so good. Is it an OCD, C OCD thing? No, I just think it looks pretty. I highlight from here to here because I think it looks nice. The name is I use Copilot. I think Copilot's nice, but I use it for boilerplate. I don't ever, I don't like to let it write code for me. I like, I like to let it like fill in structs and, and that stuff for me. It's, it's much, much nicer. Again.